Hello there. So this week we're considering high risk foods and the two, hopefully you've worked your way through the lesson PowerPoint and you understand a little bit what high risk foods are. Now, high risk foods are foods that are nutritious i.e. they usually are quite high in protein. Bacteria like having, like having food to eat, they can multiply. You also find that high risk foods are, have moisture in them because bacteria need moisture to be able to reproduce and to survive. The final thing that you'll notice about high risk foods is that they, they perish, they're perishable, they go off quickly. So we usually keep them in the fridge. High risk foods are things like raw meat, raw chicken, raw fish, raw egg, and then some of our dairy products like cream and milk. When we handle high risk foods, so when we handle high risk foods, we have to be really careful. We need to try and make sure that we don't cross contaminate. Cross contamination means that bacteria get transferred from one uh, high risk food to a lower risk food. For example, if we didn't wash our chopping board after using it to cut up our fish today and then chopped up some tomatoes, the tomatoes would get contaminated by the bacteria and the juice that was left over from the raw fish. Which means that actually potentially there could be some food poisoning bacteria on those tomatoes. And if we didn't then cook those tomatoes, we would then eat them and potentially get ill. So that's what high risk foods are, that's what cross contamination is. One way that we can prevent cross contamination with the recipe we do today is this. First thing is to, to say to you, every time you handle a high risk food, you need to wash your hands. If you're making the, the fish fingers, which this recipe is, or this demonstration is for, then every time you touch the raw fish, and every time that you touch the raw egg, you need to wash your hands. Okay? So, we also need to make sure that the high risk food is kept in the fridge. Now, the fish that I had was frozen fish. It was just white fish that was frozen. So, the day before I wanted to use it, I took it out of the freezer, I placed it in a dish, I covered it with cling film and I put it in the bottom of the fridge. The reason it went in the bottom of the fridge is so that any juices that came off it wouldn't be able to drip down and cross contaminate other foods. You need to make sure before you start working with your fish, if it was frozen, that it is defrosted all the way through. However, you can also use fresh fish. You can get that from the supermarket. I doubt very much at the moment you'll be going to the fishmongers, but you can certainly get fresh fish in the supermarket. When I bought my fish today, uh, when I bought my fish, sorry, uh, last week it wasn't, like I say, it was frozen, I looked on it and it had the little emblem, the blue logo with a fish on it. And that says MSC, the Marine Stewardship Council. And that means that the fish has been sustainably and responsibly sourced. So do have a little look before you discard your packaging to see if your fish had the MSC logo on it. You'll see that in the lesson PowerPoint and hopefully you've already worked through the lesson PowerPoint. So then fish fingers. First thing you need to do is get yourself ready to cook. That means you need to wash your hands, put an apron on and you need to tie your hair back if it touches your shoulders. You then need to get um, some sort of cloth and whatever it is your parents ask you to do to clean the surfaces, you need to do. By now you've cooked quite a few times for me in food, and so you should know exactly what you're doing when it comes to cleaning your surfaces. Now you're going to need to preheat your oven. I have given you the recipe in the PowerPoint so you can look through it. This is just to give you my top tips, particularly for safety when you are working with these high risk foods. I've preheated the oven, I've preheated it to about 190 or gas mark 5 or 6, please excuse me a moment. <coughs> I'm now just going to wash my hands because I've coughed. Any time that you find that you need to cough or sneeze, it does happen unfortunately, you must make sure you wash your hands afterwards. baking tray okay and you're going to take a little bit of oil and you're going to put probably a teaspoon of oil onto the baking tray if you've got a pastry brush at home you can then just brush the oil all over the baking tray like this 
We don't want so much oil that it's like a paddling pool. This is just to help to stop the fish and the breadcrumbs from sticking. Okay? If you don't have a pastry brush at home, then some um, kitchen roll would just help to spread the oil out for you. I'm going to put this into the wash because it's greasy and I've finished with it. Next thing I'm going to ask you to do is get yourself a smallish bowl that's quite narrow at the bottom, it's got quite a small diameter, and some breadcrumbs. Now if we're at school I would encourage you to make your own breadcrumbs using a couple of slices of bread. However, we're not at school and I can't supervise you. So I don't want you to go and make your own breadcrumbs, homemade breadcrumbs, using bread and a food processor. The only way you can do that is if your parents are happy to do that for you. I don't want you using a food processor, please. I'm then going to put about a centimetre of breadcrumbs into the bottom of this bowl. Now, this looks a bit mean, and it's like, is that going to be enough for the fish that I'm coating? Perhaps it won't be. However... I can always add more breadcrumbs to this if I clean my hands and put them in. But once I've had the egg being dipped in here, or the fish, which has egg on it, I've got two high-risk foods going in to these breadcrumbs. I'm not going to be able to reuse them. I don't like food waste, so what I'm going to try and do is use the, the least amount of breadcrumbs possible. So I can always add more, but if I've got too many, sadly they will have to go in the bin at the end. So that is my breadcrumbs there. You might find your breadcrumbs crumbs aren't this golden colour, that's okay. There is natural breadcrumbs, this just happened to be what I could order. The next thing then is to get a measuring jug or another small bowl with quite a small diameter at the bottom and your egg. And I'm going to crack the egg on the side of the measuring jug or small bowl with a sharp tap. And then you'll see that there's a crack in your egg and I want you to put your thumbs where the crack is and open the egg into the measuring jug. Now I have now got raw egg on my fingers from touching the shell. So you need to now think, this is a high risk food, I could contaminate surfaces, I could contaminate equipment, so I need to put the egg shells into the bin and I need to go wash my hands because every time we handle a high risk food, we need to wash our hands. wash them with soap and you're then going to take a fork and you're going to whisk this together at the moment you can see there's a yolk and the white of the egg you're going to whisk this until you can't see a yolk and you can't see a white it becomes uniform and the same so if you have a little look in there you should be able to see that the white and the yolk are mixed together I'm going to put this fork into the washing up because it's had the raw egg on it. And then I'm going to start getting a production line ready because once I've got my fish chopped up I want to be able to get this onto the tray and only wash my hands hopefully once more but you might need to wash them twice more. So I'm going to make a little production line. I'm going to be preparing my fish here and when my fish is ready I'm going to be dipping it into the egg which is like an edible glue. It will stick the breadcrumbs onto the fish. Then my fish that's breaded will go onto the tray. So I've made myself a production line. My fish then. Now unfortunately the only board I've got that I use for raw meat or raw fish is white and it's going to be quite tricky for you to see what I'm doing. So I think what I'm going to do to make it a bit easier brown paper down that as uh, some piece through paper. Please don't do this at home. This is just so you can see the fish, otherwise it will just be a sea of white and you won't see anything. So this is just for you to be able to see. So I'm going to take my fish, now I'm aware that once I handle my fish, I have to wash my hands, so I'll remove the cling film. And there's my beautiful fish. Now, you should have boneless fish, it should be a fillet, so you should not be able to feel any bones in it, and there shouldn't be any skin. Now, you might see on here that there's some like, white bits on the back, and there is white bits on the back, it's where the skin's been removed. If you've got skin on your fish, 
you will know because it's it's um, got like uh, scales on it almost. So you will know if there's skin, and if there's skin, you need to remove that. Now the recipe says just use one fillet of white fish, and white fish works well. So that's things like cod, haddock, or pollock. One of those is fine. However, at the moment, at school we wouldn't have time for you to do more than one fillet, but if you've got your fish in and you, it comes in a pack of two large fillets, check with your parents and carers and it might be that you bread the whole lot and then it will be done for your tea. So check with your parents or carers how much they'd like you to do. I will just show you using one piece of fish, but I'm going to do the other two pieces of fish for our tea tonight. Now, you can absolutely try and cut these. Now, they need to be in finger-sized pieces, and I always say to students, they need to be about the width of two of your fingers. So it's a bit bigger than finger size, it's two finger-sized pieces. With the shape of this piece of fish, however, it's going to be quite tricky to do that. So I could absolutely cut this using my knife, but I can promise you that at school students really struggle using a knife. So if you have a pair of scissors that you use at home or your parents use at home just for cutting up food and particularly raw meat or fish then you can use food scissors please do not go and take a pair of scissors that you use for wrapping paper or whatever please don't do that they have to be food scissors and you're going to then cut these into finger sized pieces or it could be that you're using your uh, knife to do this now because this is quite long and if I cut this to show you what I mean, I happen to have a piece of fish which isn't going to cut nicely into two finger size pieces. There we go. Now, you can see that there's a really big difference in length between that piece of fish and this piece of fish. Therefore, what I'm going to do with these two particularly large pieces of fish, and it's your choice, I'm going to cut this one in half then that gives it all a chance to cook at about the same time. Okay? I could cut this one, but I think this one's quite a thin piece anyway. And so we're going to go with this as it, as it goes. Now, if for any reason you need to then get your production line set up, then you have to go wash your hands to get your production line set up. However, because I've set it all up, what I now need to do is to take my fish, I dip it in the egg, so the other high-risk food, so that's the glue, and then it goes into my breadcrumbs. Once it's gone in the breadcrumbs and I've managed to coat it with breadcrumbs, I place it onto the tray. Do the same again. Now, because I go and I go straight from one piece of fish to the next, I'm not washing my hands. If I went to go and answer the door or something, I would absolutely have to wash my hands before I did that. But because I'm going from one piece of fish to the next, I am not washing my hands in between. Oh, that one there's wanting to stick. So, that is the fish that I'm going to demonstrate for you at this stage. I will stop the video in just a moment and I will carry on and do the rest of my fish. Okay, but for now that's as far as you're going to, you're going to see me do. So, once you finish doing exactly that for all of the pieces of your fish, you will find that your hands are very sticky you need to go and wash your hands in hot soapy water. You must use soap, okay? First thing I am going to do is just give, get rid of some of the breadcrumbs off my fingers and then I'm going to go wash my hands in hot soapy water. Okay, and that helps us to minimise any risk of cross-contaminating other things. We've washed off, the, uh, washed off any fish juice, we've washed off any egg, and that will hopefully remove any dangerous bacteria. I'm going to stop the video here, I'm going to get the rest of my fish ready, and then I'm going to talk you through how you're going to put them into the oven, and then what you're going to do once they're in the oven. Okay, I'll rejoin you in a minute. Okay, so I've now managed to get the rest of my fish breaded here. So I did three fillets because that's what I had and that's what I was going to use up so there's enough for everyone to have it. 
Um, you can see that some of these have got little blobs of the breadcrumbs. What you might find uh, when you are making your fish fingers is that the breadcrumbs get egg on them and then actually they start clumping together. That's what's happened on a couple of those near the end. That's what happens. Don't worry too much about it. And you can see that I've spread them out so that they're not close up to each other. By allowing the hot air to circulate around them, they will cook quicker. And they should cook in probably about 15 or so minutes. If your fish is particularly large, it might take up to 20 minutes, but probably about 15 minutes it's worth having a little look and I'll show you what to look for to see if they're cooked or not. I've tried to put the bigger pieces of fish near the outside. If you remember from bread making week and scone making, uh, I said to you that uh, food cooks quicker from the outside in, so anything you place around the edge will get more heat and cook quicker, so the bigger pieces of fish it's sensible to put there. So these now need to go into the oven. I wash my hands so my hands are clean. I'm going to put my oven gloves on and I want you to remember your oven safety. So you either need somebody to do this for you, your parent or carer, or you need to um, make sure that you uh, have somebody to help you with the door. So I've got my oven gloves on. I'm going to open the oven door, but obviously you're going to ask somebody to do that for you. You're going to count to three, two, one, to allow that hot air to escape and then they go safely into the oven. You're then going to close the door and then a little reminder of what you now need to do. So, you've now got left over a whole variety of things. Because I defrosted my fish, I've got a, a container which has got fish juice in it. The fish juice needs to go down the drain and then I need to carefully wash this up. You then need to wash up your chopping board. Please remember you won't have brown paper, a uh, greaseproof paper on your chopping board. That was just so that you could see the fish when I cut it up for you. You're going to have a chopping board, you're going to have a something that's had egg in it and something that has had breadcrumbs in it. The breadcrumbs need to go in the bin. You cannot reuse those because they've had raw fish in it and they've also had raw egg. We don't want to cross contaminate and cause illness. Any remaining egg you've got, that needs to go in the bin as well. And my suggestion to you is this, anything like these here, you're going to wash those up first and the things that have had the fish actually in it, so for example my dish where the fish defrosted, that maybe gets washed up last. When you finish doing your, all your washing up you must tip your water out, otherwise the next person that goes to do the washing up will have a load of water that's had raw fish juice in it, which nobody wants. The last thing to do when I've got all my washing up done is I must spray down these surfaces. If we don't, we are at risk of having cross-contamination where we could have raw fish, just droplets of it around and then somebody else maybe makes a sandwich and could then the bacteria from what's left on the table could then get onto their sandwich. So please then spray and clean your surfaces down as well. They're going to be about 15 minutes. I'm going to stop the video here while I get my washing up done and what I'd like you to do is then watch and I'll show you how you know when your fish fingers are cooked. So go on now. Get washed up, dried up, surface is cleaned down. Thank you. So then, the fish fingers have been in the oven cooking for about 15 minutes. Now you aren't going to be able to tell from the outside if they're cooked or not. Okay, So we're going to need to test them when they come out to see if they're cooked. Now, I've done all my washing and drying up in really hot soapy water. I've also sprayed down my surfaces with antibacterial spray so that they are clean, so there's no risk of cross-contamination from the raw fish and raw egg that we've used today. I've got out a cooling rack or a heat-proof mat if that's what you use at home. And I've got a fish slice, because I'm going to need that to check and see if our fish is cooked. And a knife. It doesn't have to be the sharpest of sharp knives, it, it just needs to be able to cut through the fish. Now what we're going to do to see if the fish is cooked is, we're going to have a little look at the breadcrumbs and they should be a little bit golden, but the breadcrumbs are golden anyway. And the fish might not be cooked and the breadcrumbs are still golden. So what we're going to do is take what looks like the chunkiest, fattest piece of fish and in the very middle we're going to cut it open. A white fish, so you should have been using either haddock, cod or pollock, it goes bright white when it's cooked. It's kind of a greyish colour when it was raw. You'll also notice that when you cut it open and it's cooked, steam will come out from the centre and that tells you that it is hot all the way through. So, I'm going to get my oven gloves and then I'm going to carefully get these out of the oven. So at this stage it might be you want to ask your parent or carer to do this for you 
or at the very least they need to be holding the oven door open for you. So remember, we open the oven door and we count to three to let that hot air and steam escape. And then we carefully take out our fish fingers. I'm going to put them onto the cooling rack, the whole tray, and then shut this oven door. Let's turn the cooker off. Now the, the baking tray is really hot, so I cannot touch this baking tray without wearing oven gloves. Okay. Um, you'll notice that the fish fingers have got a really nice golden colour on the breadcrumbs, that's a good sign. Now when I'm looking at the chunkiest piece of fish, I actually think that that's quite a big piece of fish, it's quite uh, fat. Uh, but this one here is bigger in surface area. So what I'm going to do is take my knife and I'm going to cut open this one at the back here. So if I turn it around to the front. So I am keeping my hand that I don't write with inside the oven glove and holding onto the tray. And I'm using the hand that I do write with. I'm just going to cut these open. And at this stage, it would be a really good idea for you to ask your parents or carers to help you. So as I cut these open, there was a big billow of steam that came out which tells me is a good indicator that these are cooked. And then if I can, I'm going to get these onto here to show you. Now the fish is bright white in the middle and it's starting to flake apart, i.e. it falls apart. It's not stuck together. When we cut the fish up, it was all staying in one piece. But now you can see there are little flakes of fish in there. This tells me that this is cooked. If the fish was still raw in the middle, it didn't flake apart, there was no steam, then these need to go back into the oven to make sure that they are cooked all the way through. Like I say, to test, you find the biggest piece of fish, the fattest piece of fish, and cut it through the middle of it. So that if, it's, if the heat has got right through to the middle and cooked the very centre of the fish, the rest of the fish should be fine. If you've got a few bits of fish that are looking quite large, you can absolutely repeat the test a couple of times, but otherwise, for me, I know that the rest of the fish should be cooked because if that piece is cooked, the rest of them are either smaller or less fat. With my hand in the oven glove, and this could be your parents do this for you rather than you, I'm then going to take my fish slice and loosen all of the fish fingers off. They do get just a little bit stuck, even though we've oiled the tray. So it's just a case of loosening them off. Hopefully then you'll be able to enjoy those for whatever you and your parent and carer decide that you're going to do with your fish fingers. I really hope that you enjoy making these and I hope that you are able to bear in mind the high risk foods and bear in mind all the precautions you need to do to keep you and your food safe. Take care won't you, bye bye.